uplifted lies one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. And here's your host, Miss Kim. what God is getting ready to do, get excited how God's getting ready to flow. Uh, I know he's shining in my life. I know he's shining in yours. Uh, You all should be able to know that God is amazing. He's amazing for me. I know he's amazing for you. 
So I want you all who are listening to me, uh, get excited for what God is getting ready to do. Well, hey, ladies and gentlemen, this is me, your host, Calvin Logan, with the Logan Power Show, nationwide, worldwide. And we appreciate y'all who have been in the faith with us. We appreciate y'all who are just rocking it out with us. We know God is ready to make some moves and do some things here. Hey, it's September 28th, 2019. I'm excited. You should be excited. So before we get all our guests on, uh, and get ready to rock and roll with us here at the Logan Power Show. Let's go into prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father, for this opportunity to come into your presence and your will. We thank you, Father, how you are amazing. We thank you, Father, how you're blessing us and you're opening doors for us, Father. We just thank you, Father, that your will is being done both now and forever. We thank you, Father, right now that every listener is listening, that their lives are being changed, and those in the replay, every guest, Father, you're elevating them. And we just praise you and thank you and all great prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, we got another returning guest back here, the Logan Power Show. This is me, your host, Calvin Logan, with the Logan Power Show. So first up, our guest, the one and only Mr. Kevin Thornton. What's going on, sir? Can you hear me, Mr. Thornton? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Can you I hear can me? hear you loud and clear. How you doing? Doing good. Good to have you. Thanks for having me on. Oh yes, sir. I'm just, I'm excited to have you on. I'm excited to be blessed of you being a part of what we're doing here live at Logan Power Show. I think anybody um, with your tenacity, your fire, hey, we got to have you in the building because you're making a difference. So I'm just making sure that, that people like yourself uh, are just doing what you need to do, and we appreciate you. So without further ado, um, I'm going to let you have the mic. You know, hey, we're going to piggyback off of you, telling the people about yourself, about, you know, Wellness Life Architect. I know you have your show every Monday from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Um, how is life treating you, man? Because you've been, you, you're coming back, returning guests. How's everything going with you? Everything's going pretty good, brother. Um, like you said, my name is Kevin Thornton. I am a holistic health coach and a life coach. Um, I author, co-author of the book, 20 Beautiful Men, um, and the radio host of the um, national show, The Wellness Architect Show. And for my platform, my whole intention is to inspire, educate, and empower people to become the best versions of themselves, mind, body, and spirit. Um, and it's just been a blessing. I was in your, I was in your uh, state a couple of weeks ago. Um, we had like a men's talk in uh, Greenville, South Carolina. At uh, we, we was at the at the one of the one of the libraries, and we talked about um, everything regarding men. And so they asked me to speak on high blood pressure and erectile dysfunction. And wow, it was yeah. So it was very it was very interesting. You know, they they learned a lot. Uh, a lot of people, you know, questioning me about you know becoming a client because they have those issues, and they're trying to get that res- issues resolved. So, you know, life's been good. So I see great things are happening with you as well. Absolutely. Yes, sir. And definitely want to talk a little bit more. When you talk about um, eating disorder and erectile dysfunction, can you tell people why, what are the problems, why are we having that issue? I think a lot of people, it's not really being addressed on how, like, you know, right. certain things affect right. your body. Um, right, and we go and we always focusing on medicine to be the healer, mm-hmm. but but we know um, it could be eating, it could be all kind of things. So can you elaborate? What are some things that can help us? You know, the guys yeah. who are listening, and how can they get better? And that thought to go to medication for the um, rest of their life. Right. So erectile dysfunction is pretty much um, the penis is a muscle, and it has some small veins that bring oxygen to the penis and if the oxygen can't get to the penis then the penis cannot get hard and so um, and a lot of times those issues come from diet but um so a lot of times too if the man is on high blood pressure and you're taking high blood pressure medication the side effect for taking that medication is erectile dysfunction if he's on diabetic he's a diabetic and he's on diabetic medication the side effect is erectile dysfunction. So 
And a lot of men are aware of that. And so what they do is, instead of trying to change their diet, they still maintain the same diet, but they don't take their medication, especially if they plan on trying to have sex. They don't take the medication. Mm -hmm. So then with, with that being said, you're not changing your diet, but you still want to not take your medication. And then a lot of times that leads up to stroke and heart attack and possible death. So if that's so that's something that you don't want to do. You don't want to have that issue, but you know you got high blood pressure, uh, or you got diabetes. Then in turn, what you need to do is change your diet and incorporate certain foods into your diet that is high in nitric oxide that can help bring oxygen to your body and um, you know help you get the blood flowing to your penis. Like beef. Got it. Beef. Beef is a major food that we need to eat, men and women. Uh, it's good for your blood pressure. It's good for overall health. It's good for not only just the blood pressure, but if you're trying to have sex and you want to have, you know, have, have a good performance, beets is there for that as well. Um, you know, peppers, cayenne peppers is really good as well. And you can get nitric oxide as well, but it also helps thin the blood so the blood can move smoother. So that's something you need to have in your diet on a daily basis as well. Um, pomegranate seeds is another thing that would help with the nitric oxide. Watermelon is another good thing. One of the things that we need to like fall back off of, I'm not going to say completely get away with it, but you need to fall back on it, is meat. Um, a lot of times meat is, it creates a lot of mucus because it's not something you're supposed to eat a lot of. And mm. the mucus then turn hearts into arteries. And that may be harder for the blood to go through to the penis because the mucus is hard in the, in the vein. So we need to cut out, you know, eating so much meat and eat, you know, include more vegetables and fruits. And then also I would recommend people do like a salt water flush so it's pretty much you drink it warm water with salt, and you drink it down, and it cleanses your system. And you do that for about a couple of days, and then that will help flush out the system, and then start changing your diet at the same time. That's that. Wow, wow. Yes, sir. You, like I said, you you going on you going a little deep, and here at the Logan Power Show, everything is like you know G rated. We talk about things that you know pe- people are going through. Um, right. And, you know, and the thing is, think Calvin, that situation is not for men in their 40s and their 50s and up. Guys in their 20s are having it now. Guys in their 30s are having it now. So it's yeah. something that needs to be addressed early on, too. Absolutely. I mean, uh, I can I, I tell you right now, like, you know, you, you got a lot of guys getting tired in the game, too tired. Mm-hmm. And they're in their 20s and their 30s, even in their 40s. I think your body should be revving up, you know, like you, you always mm-hmm. see an athlete. You always wonder mm-hmm. why um, certain athletes, you've been watching, you ever see certain guys, oh, man, this, why does guy slim down to play? Not playing ball, it's just keeping themselves together. Um, mm-hmm. I think um, Kobe Bryant said something that was very, he said, like, man, after I retired, I still was working on me, my body. Like, you would hear some guys say, well, you know, um, I'm going to have a tough season, so I got to watch what I put in my diet. I can't mm-hmm. have, you know, certain foods, certain things mm-hmm. that really um, combat me because I can't survive the whole season if I'm jacked right. up. And you, you see right. how certain guys, like, you know, how this guy's been in the game 20 years. This person's been in 14, 15 years with – they they watching what they're eating. They got certain, uh, you know, diet that they're on, not just trying to play with it, but they're being very serious about their diet because their diet is pivotal to the body. Um, right. Now, since you are a life coach and you deal with all different type of people, walks of life, mm-hmm. um, the stuff that you're talking about right now, like you, mm-hmm. you get to research it. You don't ever see mm-hmm. it all the time. Um, as you would say, online, mm-hmm. you never will see. Like you know, research some of these things that you're talking about, and Absolutely. a lot of times the, the drug departments 
want us to be full of of things that are not good for the body. They want mm-hmm. us to be up on medicines mm-hmm. and not going to eat right, eat healthy. And right. even in our, if you look at society, um, fruit and vegetables are more expensive than junk food. Mm-hmm. So what are some other things, I guess, that would help us have a better type of eating mentality? What do you also recommend for those for those that are um, sort of struggling? Um, well, first of all, for me as a coach, we would, I would need to, I'd like to figure out where you're out of balance at in your life, uh, whether it's your spiritual life, your relationships, your career finances, or is it your lifestyle? Lifestyle is eating, drinking, sleep, or lack of sleep, exercise, all that kind of stuff. And then we'll try to figure out from where, where you're out of balance at, try to figure out what is calling you to be out of balance. Because when, when we out of balance, when we out of balance, we tend to make bad choices eating and drinking. And so therefore, okay. so then that's one of the first things I would like to do, you know, figure out where you're out of balance at so we can move your work on that. Because once we work on that and your mindset, then we can change. It'll be easier to change how you see food. Does that make sense? Because, makes perfect sense. And so a lot of times, you know, we are quick to say, you know, I got high blood pressure, I got diabetes, and it's genetic. That's, you know, your parents may have it, but that's not necessarily mean you're supposed to have it. What's, the, what's, what's being genetic being passed down is the bad lifestyle of eating. So generation to generation, we have been passed down the food from how we ate in slavery, the grain, you know, all that, the all the pork and all that kind of stuff, and we eating that good soul food, and that good soul food is not really good for us. And then, so then, therefore, that causes us to have blood pressure and the high cholesterol. You know, only on the reality is only five to ten percent of all cases of high blood pressure and cholesterol and diabetes is based on genetics, 5 or 10%. The reality is we all get high blood pressure and high cholesterol and diabetes based on our lifestyle. Eating bad, drinking bad, not getting enough sleep, and not exercising. So we got to figure out why we're not making you know, our health our primary, our primary reason to uh, do and live better. And gotcha. then from there, there, we can start incorporating what you need to do. But the reality is, Calvin, we need to eat more fruits and vegetables. And like you gotcha. see, when I put clients, and when I tell them, I put clients on a meal plan, before they do anything, I do a cleanse and I make them eat 100% raw fruits and vegetables for 14 days. 14 days, raw fruits and vegetables, you know, a gallon of water a day. No, mm-hmm. no, no, no sugar, no alcohol, no processed foods, no meat, no caffeine, other than maybe some tea, because certain <laughs> teas may have, you know, caffeine. So you're going to drink some green tea. You might, I might have you drink some dandelion tea, because that's going to clean out your liver. Uh burdock root tea, all these type of things to help clean up certain parts of the system. And the intention of that is to eating the raw fruits and vegetables, it's going to allow your, your organs a chance to rest and heal. Because we, over, mm. we are over, we overusing our organs by eating so much meat. And we've been programmed to have this mindset of we need the meat because we need protein. And you get protein from vegetables, you get protein from beans, you get protein from seeds, you get protein from nuts, you get protein from, you know, seaweed. You know, it's different things that you can eat that is a complete protein that's not meat. Wow. And so that and so we I have them incorporate all these things into their diet while we're doing the cleanse. So you so you, you still get your protein, but you're allowing your body to recover because you're not overworking their body. 
you know, all the processed foods and the meats and all that kind of stuff. Amen. Amen. And, like, hey, all y'all who who listening right now, you know, I hope it's helping you. Uh, I know for me, I definitely going to, you know, I know from, like, if you don't mind me asking, telling people, Mr. Thornton, how old are mm-hmm. you? I'm 47. 47. Now, if you look at Mr. Yes, Fort, Mr. Thornton right now on his Facebook page, he don't look 47. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Hey, like, like I said, you you watch certain guys like me. Like y'all look at me now, and I may look like in my twenties, but I'm I'm 38, uh-huh. and um, I can honestly tell people, uh, I'm getting back into the grind of working out more. Um, uh-huh. my biggest thing is 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 uh, I can testify myself. I got to eat better. I I wouldn't lie to uh-huh. nobody. Um, I'm definitely going to take you up on some of the things you talked about just to help just with cleansing the body, the beats, just eating more. Uh-huh. I'm a fruit guy. And uh-huh. what I've seen, just, I don't know about anybody else, but good fruit, the good fruit are in certain uh-huh. grocery stores. You're not going to find uh-huh. them in all grocery stores. Like if you yeah. see like, okay, Calvin, I want an orange. Okay, we see an orange. What type of orange? Talking about, talking about a navel orange. Now, a navel uh-huh. orange is huge. A lot of fiber, a lot of vitamin C. Man, those are great mm-hmm. oranges. When you can cut them, it's different. Now that chicken, that chicken cheap orange that you're getting from whatever it place, mm-hmm. you cut that orange, it's gonna it's gonna be smushy. Um, it's gonna taste yeah. wrong, and you can tell in certain grocery stores. You like well, when you go to the fruits and vegetables department, if it looked like you've been run mm-hmm. ran over by 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 a dog on interstate, you already knew mm-hmm. what time it was. Yeah, the, the worst it, it, of the worst it, it, fruit, and it, it's the worst it of the world vegetables. It, it was, it was, um, what's unfortunate is that a lot of times, if I'm like in my neighborhood, with this is a suburb which is predominantly black, I can't do all my shopping there because a lot of stuff that I may like to eat and like to incorporate my diet, such when I'm cleansing, uh, I can't get it from that store. Now, I can go mm-hmm. to that same grocery store, but I could go into a predominantly white area. I can pretty much get everything I need from that store. And if I can't Got get it. from that store, it's it's another it's a farmer's market like Sprouts or something like that. I can get everything that I need. The variety of fruits, the variety of um greens, all that kind of stuff that I I might want to use while I'm I'm detoxing myself. And <laughs> so, you know, if I, so if I say, Calvin, I need you to get some dandelion greens, you might not be able to get it. If you in a predominantly black area at a grocery store, so they're not gonna have it. Cause a lot of us not gonna, even, a lot of us don't even know what the underlying greens are and what mm. they're good for. But you go to a store in their area and you can find it. So Got it. you know that's that's the unfortunate thing. And so it's like, yeah, yeah. Now for those that may be a little bit. Can't Google it right now. Can you tell people what are dandelion greens and how are they beneficial to the body? Well, dandelion greens is a green. Um, uh, it's a bitter green. Um, I tend okay. to use it in a. I tend to mix it with romaine lettuce in a salad. I could do it in a salad, or I'll juice it. And what's um, beneficial for it is dandelion greens, or if you want to get the tea, uh, dandelion root tea. It's going to help um, detox your liver, um, mm. and that's a that's a major thing that you want to do. So detox, it's going to detox the liver. That's something that I have, you know, people eat because when I do a, a cleanse, I want you to try to detox all the major origin organs um, during the 14 days. So another thing okay. that I'll also have them have them to incorporate is. Um, Parsley, cilantro. Now you can buy that at the grocery store, um, and then you have to probably go to a health food store or get some like sprouts and go and get some chlorella and spirulina. And those are like algae. It, it'd be like an algae powder, and they are complete proteins. But it helps. All four of those things are going to be good blood cleansers. It's going to help cleanse your blood. And that's what you need to while you're trying to do a detox as well. 
Wow. Okay. Well, we're gonna talk about starting <laughs> off air because you know, because I this is just helping helping my spirit. I know. Um, I appreciate it. I the reason why I say that is because I always want to get better. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I tell people right now that the um, the military method, that boot camp method, mm-hmm. that is one of the best detoxes, best physical shape things that will help your soul mm-hmm. that I've ever been on. Like being mm-hmm. in the Marine Corps, that 90 days in boot camp, mm-hmm. because what I learned was the body operates at a certain time, we talk about exercising. I wonder why people mm-hmm. got up like crack of dawn early before even the crow got up, before even the, the, the cows crowed. And I wondered mm-hmm. why you would hear guys like, well, man, I get up 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock in the morning, and I got I go two, three hours hard. And he's like, well, mm-hmm. shoot, man, why can't, I, why can't I get up at 8 or 11 and go three, two, three hours hard? Well, mm-hmm. the body, the body doesn't doesn't respond different. What I found out was is that through elements and morning, there's a shift between a certain parts of the atmosphere where there's like a mist, better quality of air happening mm-hmm. in between, I say 3.30 and above mm-hmm. to about like about 5.30, around 7 o'clock. In that time, there's mm-hmm. some in the realm that happens where the air quality changes, so your running right. changes differently. How you mm-hmm. respond running is a whole different type of ball game when you run. Um, mm-hmm. It's extra energy. Um, mm-hmm. It's a great time to eat. Like after you yep. get a good exercise and worked out, if you say, hey, I'm eating in the morning between 6 and 7, I don't know about mm-hmm. y'all, but that's one of the best times to put something in your stomach before you get your day started and it gives sort of a boost. Cause like, and I wonder mm-hmm. why, why cats do this. Like why are they like, man – and we in the gym, four o'clock in the morning. I've been busting yep. out for two, three hours. Then I have my yep. little meal, and then you know, then I I may work out later on, but I I, I pick and choose. That would be a little bit different type of practice. And you're like, well, why mm-hmm. you don't do the same thing through the day? And I found out the body responds different. And you're then right. I found out too was when you consume food was a huge thing. Cause I remember we got in the Marine Corps. We had we ate three times a day. Uh-huh. We exercised almost two, three times a day. Either it could have mm-hmm. been physical or a lot of walking. And you would mm-hmm. say, like, man, if I ate three times a day, I'm going to be big as a horse. But based off of I did no weight lifting, straight calisthenics, mm-hmm. uh, you know, push-ups, crunches, getting mm-hmm. the body together, drink tap water, not real water. Mm-hmm. I drank water plus tap. For 90 Mm -hmm. days, I literally saw a change in my body that I've never seen before where I literally went from, I think it was like 170 down to 155, and then Mm -hmm. 155 all muscle. And you Mm -hmm. saw a difference, and I wondered, like, why is it that some Mm -hmm. of these these particular things are not really implemented Right. Well, you talk about working and, out, like you, and that's and, the thing. It's, it's so funny that you said that, Cal. Yeah. Uh, it's because my brother, was, he went to the Marines, and mm-hmm. so everything you said is completely true. You know, he was when he was in um, basic training for those ninety days. He said he drank water. He exercised twice a day, like you said. A lot of calisthenics. He didn't lift no weights, but he looked that was the best he ever looked. And now he lifts weights now but he still has not got to that look that he did when he first finished basic training. And mm-hmm. I'm with you. I'm with everybody else. You know, I get up, I'm at the gym at 5 a.m. hands down, Monday through Friday. Um, because I get my best workouts in at that time. Now, I might go back in the evening because I might want to take a spin class or something. And that's the reason I like spin class at, you know, at 5 o'clock in the morning. So I might come back and do, you know, some extra cardio with spin class or something like that in the evening. So I get my best part of my workout in, in the morning because, you know, I just got been sleeping, resting good, and now I got this good air, and I got a lot of energy. If I wait too late, you know, I'm, my energy is down because I've been working and all that kind of stuff. So I'm not going to put in the same type of workout in as I did before. So, but I also want to say, too, because 
Uh, one of the things that people don't know as well is that we suffer from chronic inflammation and we suffer from chronic constipation. So here's the thing. My, my, let's, let's say, Calvin, you was my client. And you reached out to me and said, Kev, well, I want to work with you. One of the questions I'm going to ask you is, how many times do you go to the bathroom a day? So let's say, for example, you say I only go to the bathroom once a day, but you eat three times a day. Technically, you are constipated. Because if your system is clean, you should go to, if you eat three times a day, you should go to the bathroom three times a day. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you go in the bathroom once a day, once every other day, once a week, you're constipated. And we got to do an intense detox to clean your system up because you got a lot of feces in your body. And most people have between five and 45 pounds of feces in their body because they're wow. not. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I wouldn't have a collide done. I wouldn't have a collide done one time. And I go to the bathroom. I go to the bathroom three times a day. But I wouldn't have a collide done. And uh, when I got finished my colonic, I had dropped 10 pounds. Because I still had, even though I go to the bathroom, I eat clean a lot most of the time, I still had 10 pounds of feces in me. Wow. Yes, sir. That's crazy. People yeah. are not even because you you be wondering why you be you be hearing these type of conversations but you never get a chance to hear it firsthand. You always like, well, why did man this cat dropped a ton of weight, man? This cat went from this to this. Oh man, he was eating diet, cleaning out, clean the colon out. You like, man, mm-hmm. shoot, I need to mm-hmm. give this cat ASAP. I need to figure out what's going on. But I I right. see why now is that we are. We're not getting ahead of the curve. We're not learning mm-hmm. these things that make us live long. Because I, I tell people all the time, when you hear a person that's like, say, 100 years old, you say, well, how you got to this point? When they say, mm-hmm. oh, man, all I ate was red, was a, was a meat and mm-hmm. this for 100 years, you're like, man, you was a lot. Couldn't be. Because mm-hmm. the body can't right. take that kind of processing. When you yeah. don't tell people is that I got actual the real me. Like either I killed the thing myself or it was very lean, less mm-hmm. fat on it, less all that right. extra process was off of that stuff. Mm-hmm. And I ate it straight mm-hmm. to the top. Because you always wonder, you are see Native Americans and if you study their mm-hmm. culture, it's always right. if I kill something, I eat the whole thing. Mm-hmm. It's not just I kill just I just have this part of the body. I eat the whole thing. And I used to right. wonder why my parents gave me liver all them years. Because, you know, liver was, it's good, y'all, in some cases. Mm-hmm. There's a little extra stuff on it. But right. I found that that liver helped out a whole bunch of stuff. You you ask them, like, man, you had liver before? They look at you like you lost your mind. Like, I ain't talking about liver for right. stuff. Liver, dot liver, and cot liver oil. Cot liver mm-hmm. oil is expensive now to get. But back in the mm-hmm. day, in the 80s, that stuff was cheap, but when they realized that can save your soul, that price went mm-hmm. up. Yeah. Yeah, because sometimes, sometimes, you know, depending on the client, if I do an assessment on them and I see they're not really going to a bathroom like they're supposed to, I'll make them, as part of their cleanse, um, take castor oil every day for those for those 14 days because you got to get them to start cleaning out that system. And the glass of oil, or even cod liver oil, is going to lubricate the intestinal tract and push things out that is not being pushed out. And so, yeah, you are very correct, sir. <laughs> well, I guess then, Mr. Thor, we appreciate you again. I know appreciate that you. we can we can probably talk for hours on end, but I always <laughs> want to be strategic because I want people to get the fat of what you're telling them to get them to become better. And I think we are not being very timely when it comes to important people. So that's why I always bring you on. I always invite you because these things are something that it's hard for us to find the right people. It costs an arm and a leg 
to get these kind of people to come into the room. But I'm glad I was able to get you here in the Logan Power Show to talk about some very positive things. Um, but, like, you know, definitely I'm going to talk to you more. And how can people get in contact with you, sir? Let people know how they get in contact with you. Sure. They can reach me on Facebook at Kevin Thornton or also on my business page, which is The Wellness Architect. They can hit me on Instagram at The Wellness Architect. Um, they can email me at Kevin, T is in time, 211 at hotmail.com and just put in the subject uh, detox. And then I'll, I'll make sure I get back with you. Um, yeah, because, you know, we, we got to you know, it's, we, we're heading to the fourth quarter of 2019. We don't need to wait until 2020 to try to do something different. We need to start right now. You know, Amen. So, so start to, so start today. So if you're ready to start today, contact me, and let's make it work. Amen, sir. Well, hey, I appreciate you. You know, definitely think about what you. we talked about before and uh, look forward to talking to you more. Yes, sir. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here's Kevin I Thornton. You. Yes, sir. We heard Mr. Kevin Thornton. He's a wellness architect. I call him the doctor, Dr. Thornton, when he's going to be in a minute. That's Dr. That's Dr. Kevin Thornton, you know, a.k.a. get you right. Because I'm telling y'all, man, we're going to have some seminars with him. Um, definitely every Monday, 7 to 9 p.m. Tell us, tell us the uh, Facebook Live uh, channel that you're on, Streaming Station. Um, um, if you want to watch it on Facebook, let go to Facebook and like the, the page, the Manifest TV. It's M A M A N I E M A N I F E S T TV. Like that page, and then you can watch the show from that page, or you can download the app at www.statusnetwork.net, and you can watch the show that way as well. Amen. Well, sir, hey. Um, if you need me for anything, come on your show. Let me know. I'm always a phone call. You know, I'm I'm working on that right now. <laughs> so, so so be ready. <laughs> I, I I'm ready. We gonna we gonna have some classes. You know, we gonna we gonna get it. I promise you. All right, there. All right, sir. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. This is Kevin Thornton live at the Logan Power Show. Hey, I definitely want y'all to get in contact with them. Well, I know we're going to our guest number two. Uh, this young man is first time here at the Logan Power Show. I'm definitely honored to have him. Uh, I know his mom. I know his dad. He's one of my family members. That's my little brother. The one of them is John Vaughn Jr. What's going on, sir? How you doing? How's it going? What's up, man? How's everything? I'm doing good. I can't complain. <laughs> Thank you for that well, <laughs> I got you. Well, tell people who you are, and tell people how good God has been to you, man. Well, uh, to explain a little bit, a little bit of uh, who I am, uh, again, my name is John Vaughn, and uh, I'm from Chicago, Illinois, 27 years old, just had a birthday not too long ago, actually. Um, but, yeah, uh, I can say God has been very good to me. Uh, in many different ways, and it took me a while to understand in what ways he has been good to me. Um, I think that we kind of, especially people around my age, get to a point where certain things you take for granted. For example, waking up every day. Oh, you know, my iPhone woke me up or my alarm clock woke me up. Um, Or just being grateful and blessed uh, for the things that you have. Um, buying different things or upgrading new things. Um, I'm sitting in a 2010, uh, 2020 Honda right now, um, and that's direct God's directly responsible for that. Um, so in many ways, God has been very good to me. Um, but it definitely took me some time to understand, uh, not only to be appreciative, appreciative for the things that he has done for me, um, but to truly understand uh, why he's doing those things for me, being thankful that those things, that he has given me things. Um, but it took me some time. Uh, but, yeah, I'm very, very thankful, and uh, God has been very good for me. Amen, amen. Now, since you are a millennial like myself, and uh, 
they talk about us a lot. We absolutely and, and uh, we always have a. They say we got a ton of information, but we don't apply it. Um, how are what made you say I want to get better? I want to change. I know a lot of times you always hear a lot of people say, man, I'm, I grew up in the church. I did everything uh, so-called um, what my mom and daddy told me. But I saw things that not like, you know, wasn't adding up to where I really wanted. But what you what made you give the inclination, man, I want to do better. I want to change. I want to be a better man. Uh, numerous reasons. I think the first reason, honestly, is because I tried it myself. I tried to do it without God for a while. I think we all have a moment where we kind of backslide, and, and for a moment I was kind of, I wouldn't say distancing myself, but I wasn't proactively reading my Bible anymore. I wasn't proactive trying to pray, uh, things that I was definitely messing up on. And I tried to do that for years, and it just didn't work. Um constantly coming into financial troubles, um, constantly uh, coming up short for things that you wanted to do. Uh, it, I mean, the situations obviously change depending on what you're trying to do, but I was continuously trying to find myself, and then why am I constantly coming up short for things that I either wanted to do or for things I was applying for or, or goals that I had? And taking that back seat and getting back into church and reading my Bible and praying uh, once again over the last uh, year and a half or so, getting back into it and doing it diligently, um, I kind of found out that that helped tremendously, rebuilding and reestablishing that relationship with God. Um, I think the second thing for me, oh, sorry, you say something. No, go ahead. Amen. I'm I'm agreeing with you, brother. Go ahead. Oh, and uh, the second thing for me is... um, Having uh, having a daughter, um, I think there for everybody there comes a point. Well, at least for most people, I would hope there comes a point in time where you feel what you have or what you have been doing um, isn't going to work anymore. Uh, it isn't going to work, or it's getting old, or it's just not successful like it used to be. Uh, regardless of the situation, um, I think everybody comes to a point in that and either education or business or personal life or their spirituality. Um, So for me, it was a collection of all those things, actually. And it was time to get more serious. It was time to actually put more effort into it. Uh, And my daughter actually really helped with that. It's a very powerful motivational tool, looking, staring across at somebody that looks exactly like you and them being so innocent and so young. And it's your responsibility to take care of them. They didn't ask to be here. Um, so I would say those are the two things for me, uh, reestablishing a relationship with God, uh, understanding where I have failed and fallen, and, uh, and listening to God, reading my word, and understanding how I can get back to where I want to be. And mm-hmm. also, I would say my daughter is the ultimate motivation. <laughs> yes, yes. Your daughter is a princess. She is a beauty. Um, Thank you. I think <laughs> so. Y'all, y'all understand my little brother. He's uh, he, like I said, y'all. He sound like he sound he sounds like he's a doctor right now. The man, man, been through like some serious journeys. But that just shows you how God can elevate y'all. Cause he's only twenty seven years old. Um, he has great parents, hands down. Absolutely. His parents, his parents are one of the reasons I'm I'm talking right now. So I've always I always gotta give honor to honor is due. Um if it was for people like his parents who were instilling some of God qualities in me, I never would be on the phone right now. So uh I always wanna give that olive branch out to to their son who I look that's like my little brother. And um I've seen him grow, I've seen him stumble. And I've literally seen him grow into the man that God has called him to be. And uh, I'm as proud for him. I'm happy for him. Uh, I, there's not a time that I would throw any shade under. Um, I, I remember when he was first born, 
And I remember when he was first conceived. So I think that is where I'm very ecstatic for him um, as a young man uh, doing what God has called you to be. Um, So with yourself, because you are a father and you love being a dad, you look in your daughter's eyes, be innocent. How can we create a better father environment? Because you hear a lot of times, you hear about deadbeat dads. Dads ain't doing their job. Dads are sort of stumbling and falling the wayside, which I don't believe that's the case. I believe it's not maybe just a little guidance or make a little hiccups in the road. How can we become better as dads, in your humble opinion? My humble opinion, I think it's a lot of things. But just off the top of my head, I think uh, number one, first and foremost, is accepting that responsibility because that's what it is. You're responsible for that child's body and soul at the end of the day. Um, So I think accepting that responsibility, not only accepting but embracing that responsibility, has got to be number one. Because if you don't embrace the responsibility, that's already, you're already on the wrong path, Um, which I think is number one for a lot of people. We can see how many fatherless children there are that are out there. And I think as, as men, especially as African-American men, if we just accepted that responsibility, um, children would be a lot better off. I think that has to be number one. Um, the second thing has got to be, I think, a big help as well is your relationship with God. Uh, the, you're not going to know all the answers. Actually, you're not even going to know half the answers when it comes to parenting children. Um, but to fill in those gaps, um, God is going to give you clarity on certain things. He's going to just let you do certain things as a learning tool, as an experience, Um, and he's going to give you guidance. Um, And it's up to you and with his guidance to find what best works for you and your child. Um, Again, I've been through my fair fair share of situations, but I've also had times where I really felt, okay, this really worked out, or this was really nice. Uh, So it it also comes with just talking to God as well. And um, the family that you're surrounded by, I think that that will probably be the last thing that I would say. Uh, To piggyback off what you were saying earlier, I'll use my parents as an example. Um, I really do think it takes a village to raise a child the right way. There's always constantly somebody looking out for the well-being of that child or children, Um, and that's a great thing to have. I've been extremely blessed to have parents that I have. Um, they let me live. They let me learn. And they also gave me the benefit of the doubt. They also gave me just the ability to learn on my own without pushing me too far or pushing me in this direction. They always let me learn. And I really appreciate them for that. It's so rare nowadays, I think especially, but having parents like my parents that just were the best, at at any point in time in my life, were always the very best for what I needed. My parents, I always tell people my parents are my best friends, uh, without question. They've always been there. They've always been honest. They've always been there to pick me up. And they always, they've always been there to tell me the truth, um, especially when it comes to parenting my child. Um, and that's just, it's not just that, but when it comes to that as well. So those are my three things that I would say are really important, uh, accepting that, accepting and re, uh, embracing that responsibility. I would say asking God and reading your words and truly asking him and spending time with him what's the best option or God give me some guidance as far as parenting. And the third is establishing and expanding that relationship with family around you um, because you can't do it on your own. So understanding that and getting that out of the way right off the bat is extremely helpful. You know, there's no need to be prideful. It is, it's, it's a hard job and it is a job. You're responsible, like I said, for them physically, emotionally, and spiritually. So understanding and leaning on other people is um, something that we need to do. Amen. Amen. 
And your daughter turns six next month, right? Seven. Seven next seven. month. Yeah. Yeah. Seven, yeah. Seven, yeah. Fourth of November. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, little mama will be seven. She, I know she got a year, a year ahead of my baby boy, so that's why I always got that. You know, you uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, she got, she got a year on it. Just a lot. Yeah. She got a year on it. So, <laughs> what is it that you want to see happen with your daughter when it comes from the time when she gets married or and decides that you know, daddy? Um, I found Mr. Right. Um, I found the person. Or to see how she grows. Because I know a lot of times, as a father, um, well, I got, I'm got i a little different. I got, I got a, two boys and a girl. You just don't have a girl right now. So the transition is different. You know, you got to right. flip, your, right. flip your script on a constant basis. You know, you're, um, you can't do WWE or uh, we play tackle football all day. That may be the case. And that's right. that. That ain't all, every every father don't get that kind of love all the time. But how right. is it you want your daughter to be raised? What do you want to see implemented in her that just makes it her ten times better than how your child was childhood was? Right, right. I think uh, for girls and boys, obviously it's different. Uh, but for my daughter in particular, for her. I think the main thing is that I want her to understand her worth and her value. I think everything else after that becomes a little bit more simple. But if she understands her worth in God's eyes and her father's eyes and her family's eyes, everything else after that becomes a little bit more simple. The picture becomes more clear. But if she doesn't understand who she is in God, then she'll never have the understanding. Or she doesn't understand that, hey, you know, well, I'm a Vaughn, or that's my dad, he treats me this way. Um, when she gets to high school and middle school, uh, depending on what you do now, certain things may be normal to her. Oh, okay, well, I don't like the way this guy's talking to me, but that's the way my dad talks to me, so it must be normal. Um, mm. That's not what I want, obviously. You know, I want her to know that she is a child in God's eyes, a child of God, and not only that, but my child. And to understand uh, her worth, to also be a woman of virtue as well as she grows older, um, and to be a woman of commitment, not only spiritually, um, but to her spouse as she gets older. Uh, so those are the values that I try to instill in her. Um comes from reading books that my parents have also purchased me and some I purchased myself. Uh, also reading my Bible, attending church, and it uh, comes from a lot of different things. Um, but I say the main thing for a little girl is probably getting her to understand her work in God's eyes and in yours. I think everything after that becomes a lot more simple. It's just certain things that she wouldn't go for knowing that, hey, you know, I'm a child of God or this doesn't seem right. Uh, for somebody that's supposed to be a child of God, this doesn't seem right. Or, hey, you know, my dad never did this to me or talked to me this way. This doesn't seem right, you know. So I think that that's probably the main thing for me, at least. Mm. Amen. Well, man, like I said, it, it's um, I can hear the elevation in your heart. I can hear that you know you really uh, have allowed God to really let, let you mature, um, instilled uh, a lot of strong foundational structure around you. That all the loopholes that may have would have gotten a twenty-seven-year-old young man. I really close the door. Like you are really got yourself on a whole other level. Just hearing your voice, uh, hearing your spirit. Um, you know, final thought uh, before you, where where do you want God to take you? Like what what does God say? Hey, John, I need you to do this. I need you to do this. This is this is what the purpose is set for. What is God giving you as your purpose for your life? Yeah, that's a good question. 
the purpose for my life. I think, to be completely honest, that's something I'm still working towards. Um, I've had visions as a kid, as a really young kid, uh, in the backseat of cars. I've had other visions as an adult, actually one fairly recent. Uh, so I think for me, getting and continuing to build that relationship with God is important to understand what he does want me to do and what he wants out of my life, because obviously we live for God. Uh, sure, you, know, you want to make you know money and you know, you want to go on vacation and have nice things. And that's all important um, so to me and everybody else. Um, but that's not what we're supposed to be living for. And I think continued continued um, relationship building with God will help me start to reveal that and reveal what he exactly wants me to do and the best way I can go about that, whether that's, traveling from country to country preaching this gospel or or just being the best dad that I can be. I think that that's something that I need to continue to focus on because uh, obviously I don't have all the answers right now. But okay. those are answers that I definitely uh, plan on getting. Amen. Amen. I think that's where we as a as a body of Christ got to always gotta elevate iron, got to sharpen iron. And right. we have to understand that uh, it's a process. It, it is. is a process. It's uh, it's not easy. Uh, right. You see me grow. You see me grow. I see you grow. Uh, and um, I'm really proud of you, man. I'm just excited for you. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. It's um, like you said. It really is never easy. Um, it's. It's easy to to think, oh, man, here's a million dollars. You know, whatever my dad always used to tell me, whatever you spend your time with the most becomes your God, and that's very true. Um, and that was, again, for me, as a young adult growing up, that was difficult for me. You know, you wake up in the morning, you know, turn the PS4 on or you know, go pick up your fiancé or do all of this other stuff, and you're not making time for God. Um or going to church as much as you should be going. Um, mm-hmm. So it's definitely not easy. There's definitely other stuff that the devil's going to put in your mind um, to stop you from achieving what God wants you to achieve, what we want you to become. And, um, yeah, it's an ongoing battle. Uh, but that's that's the fun of it, though. <laughs> I got it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you just heard John Vaughn, Jr., um, I call him AKA the next level to new beginning. Um, that's what he is. He's the next level to a new beginning of a generation of a of a actual roaring um nation that's gonna come out and shift what's going out going on throughout the nation. So I just you keep that name in your in your roller deck, John Vaughn Junior. Um so how can people get in contact with you, man? How can they email you? Anything on social media, how yeah, can I get in contact uh, Absolutely. So you can uh, uh, send me a message on Twitter or talk to me on Twitter or that, at, at Budget Tech Bro, uh, as, it's, as it's spelled as it sounds. Uh, or you can email me at x.johnvx at yahoo.com. Got it. My man, John Vaughn Jr., man. Hey, I love you, brother. Um Definitely give you a call later on tonight. Catch up. Uh, tell okay. your parents we tell your parents I said hello again. I know that uh, do. got the whole Vaughn household. I feel excited. I got your parents a year or so ago, and now I got you. So hey, I got them all. I got, well, I got now. I'm gonna get your daughter later on, and when I get your daughter, then I got the whole household, and I'm straight. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, plan a specific hour for her to be on because she gonna talk. So. <laughs> <laughs> she gonna be with you for a little bit. I got you. I got you. We we gonna work it. We gonna work it. We are working. We gonna we gonna get her on. She gonna we we gonna talk. I'm gonna let her talk talk all the time. She gonna I'm gonna give her a full hour because I can sense this is gonna be a, a, a good conversation. All right, cool. All right, it's a pleasure being on with you, man. I, I appreciate you uh, allowing me to come on and express some things to your audience and. uh Get a different perspective. I appreciate you for having me on.
Amen. God bless you, sir. We appreciate you. All right, no problem. Thank you. I appreciate you, too. Have a good one now. You, too. All right, ladies and gentlemen, these are the John Bond Jr., our second guest. Now we're going to our final guest, top of the hour. She is a realtor. Uh, she is a pastor evangelist. She's the one on this. Is Tiffany Parsley. How you doing, ma'am? I'm wonderful. How are you, Calvin? Good. Glad to have you here on the Logan Power Glad Show. Glad to be here. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, ma'am. So tell people who you are and tell them about um, why you got involved in being a realtor. Well, the Lord called me into real estate about a year and a half ago, and um, there are some things concerning my vision from the Lord that concern real estate, and so um, I, I per- began to pursue that, and I saw um, decent success in my first year of real estate, although I um, was going through a difficult divorce, so it affected my work habits. And so um, I finally ended up transferring to Coldwell Banker and have really um, grown to like the people there. And I greatly enjoy um, just everything about our company. And it's kind of funny because the Lord had his fingerprint on it. He had a a little um, encouragement for me, so to speak, because of their their logo being the North Star. So, yeah, just felt like the Lord was telling me he this is a part of his plan. It's a stepping stone, but it's just um, a way to get to the vision that he has given. So. Amen, amen, amen. So being a realtor, um, just, you know, from your, from your expertise and what we have going on, um, is this a good time to buy a house, buy a condo? My property it is. is a good time. It, it's it's actually it's it's a good time to buy and sell right now. Um, interest mm-hmm. rates are low, number one, um, which is nice. They're historically low still, um, and then the it's definitely a seller's market still. Um, it's leaning that way, anyways, here in the Charleston area, and um, we have a nice little market here, luckily. Um, the property retains its value pretty well, and there's a good um, demand, but lower supply. So when you find a house that you like, you really need to move quickly, and you need someone to negotiate on your behalf so that you win the house that you want to have. And that's where I come in. I negotiate for my clients. I, I I work as a listing agent and a buyer's agent, so I sell um, – homes for my clients and I also help them buy homes and I greatly enjoy every aspect of the process. I'm very communicative with my clients. I make sure that they know the whole process beginning to end. So there are no surprises or hiccups um, when, when things that are naturally a part of the process arise, they have already been told to anticipate that and it just makes the whole process a lot more um, enjoyable and less stressful for the client. I got it. Amen. Now, what are some things a client, when they come to you, what should they already have in place before they even give you a phone call or before they even step into your office? So it's always good to contact a lender um, prior to obtaining a realtor, but if you don't, talk to a lender first, that's fine because um, most offices like ours uh, work closely with um, with lenders and we have lenders that come and go in our office daily. So um, the likelihood is that even if you don't have not spoken to a lender and you don't have a pre-qualification just yet, that's okay. You can um, still just come on in and we can just kill two birds with one stone and knock it all out at one time. Okay, got it. Now, now in regards to not, what are some other things besides that that we should uh, have like already either have maybe pre pre qualified ourselves before we step into your doors? Anything else besides that? Well, well, generally speaking, you want to make sure that um, you're 
I'm, I'm not a credit expert, nor am I a lender, but um, generally speaking, if your credit score is 580 or higher, usually you can get pre-qualified for a mortgage, um, assuming you have uh, on-time payments and many other factors that go into that. I'm not a lender, so I can't really specify to that fact. Um, sure. However, to, to know your credit score, have a good idea of where you stand is a good thing before you speak to a lender. But um, one of the things that people don't realize is that the lenders have their own um, way of pulling. They, they use an average of scores. So they, their score, what they're going to see is probably going to be different from you know, your score that you might get on Credit Karma or if you were to just pull up your TransUnion or one of your credit reports. Okay. Makes sense? You. Makes plenty of sense. I get you. I hear exactly what you're saying. Um, when, since you have a passion for people, um, how far will you go for your client? You know, you always hear people have these advertising, I'm, I'll fight for you to get what you need. How intense do you get to get them to get the home of their dreams or get the house that you that you know they qualify for? Well, first of all, I personally, I don't do anything, um, not even concerning my clients. I, I please my clients. I serve my clients. I do what what they ask of me ultimately. However, it's my job to make recommendations based on my expertise and my training and um and it's my job to explain the the process of uh, the home buying process or the the home selling process. They need to know the full process. And so um, that is part of my – the first part of my job is explaining that because they need to be aware of what they're going up to bat at. And um, me, myself, personally, I have done – Quite a few things. I have walked makers of property in freezing rain with a fever. <laughs> I have done many things for my clients to to satisfy. Off-roading through the woods, looking for a plot of land. Um, you know, I'm going Sunday to a church service to um, agree in prayer with an apostle over uh, the purchase of some land for their church. So, you know, I, and this is someone I met through real estate. Um, I, I know a lot of people through ministry, but this specific apostle I met through real estate. And so, um, you know, the Lord just tends to connect me to um, people in ministry, people who are anointed and called to make an impact in the communities. And the Lord wants me to be a blessing to them and help um, relieve them of the stress of that process in, because home ownership, um, possessing the land is what we're called to do. We are called to possess the land that the Lord our God has given us. We are joint heirs with Jesus Christ, and we have an inheritance that the Lord wants to give us. And I think um, I, I do come across many people who seem fearful to move forward with the purchase of a home. Um, Sometimes when all you've done is rent your whole life, it can be kind of scary to mm -hmm. contemplate that kind of change. So um, yeah. it's, it's something that I'm passionate about helping, encourage, and um, just bring the true desire of the heart to pass um, through their living situation. And what more important um, aspect of someone's life to have the honor of helping them find where they're going to dwell and where, you know, their house is going to um, serve the Lord. Their, their family is going to be there and they're going to experience much of their life in that home. And it's an honor. It's a blessing. And there's an anointing for it because the Lord leads me to people's homes. He will show me. And, and I, I have had many clients that are unbelievers, and I can vouch for the fact that the Lord does guide my hand. So. Amen. Well, you know me, I'm, I'm always excited to, to connect with you. <laughs> 
And I'm, I'm all same always, here, Calvin. Um, same here. I can't wait to see you and Jamelia in the morning. Very excited for that. <laughs> Amen. Uh, we know um, Miss Tiffany for a long time. Uh, we have seen her grow. We've seen her uh, elevate, and uh, we believe that. We're going to do definitely some great business with her down the road. That's one of people is to hear her heart of of somebody who just wants to get people in the right type of homes and um, give people what they need. Uh, so when you think about, um, like, we, we see a lot of times people, like a lot of young people, like in mid-20s, late-20s, even early-20s, even in their 30s, um, they get discouraged by looking for a home, a condo, so they fall into the apartment um, trap where they got an apartment, and they're paying mm-hmm. first month, last month, whatever, um, deposit, and they feel the house is not a realistic factor. Um, if a person – let's give an example. Let's give an example. If a person got an apartment, say they got an apartment a couple months ago, but their passion is to get a house – would you recommend recommend them to stay in that apartment another year or start pursuing to look for a house on the condo? Well, if if they just entered into a lease, um, it, I say it all depends on their personal circumstance. It's going to depend it. on a number of factors. It's going to depend on if they're ready to buy financially. Do they have mm-hmm. – savings for their down payment and their closing costs, but normally we can negotiate much of the closing costs, if not all of it, um, into the transaction covered by the seller. Sure. Um, so, But at any rate, there there's that. And then there's also the factor of their credit score. Um, and plus, it's always good to honor your contracts, in my opinion. So if you entered into a lease already, I would say, wait your lease out until the end of the year and then when you're ready to to move forward give me a call then (laughs) Um, i'm not in the business of pressuring people or or encouraging people to make um uh, what is the word make irrational decisions or or spur of the moment decisions you know things that don't make a whole lot of sense if you've already committed to a contract i would say you know good things come to those who wait. Okay. And the Lord honors us when we honor others. And when we honor our word, the Lord honors us. So, um, yeah, that would be my answer there. (laughs) I got you. I got you. What, um, what, like, what are, what are some things that you've seen just in real estate? that we need to be mindful of when it comes to property. I know a lot of times um, people think about, man, I need to get the dream home and I'll, but, but if you get the dream home, it's going to, so we say overreach your actual expenses. Meaning that the, if you miss the mortgage or if your job, is impacted, you know, right. it's going to, it's going to affect you even keep maintaining the home. Um, it, you know, you always hear people say like, you know, get us, you know, start, you know, start with one and then move on to the next. How do you talk to those kind of individuals who um, got a big heart, big dreams, but the reality is it's not what it, what it, they need to have, but they need to get into a house. How do you speak to those individuals? You mean people who are who want to buy but they are not ready to buy? Is that who you're referring uh, to? I'm referring to um, that one is like say for instance you got people that are, they want to buy they're able to buy it but the house they're trying to get is not in their budget. I see. Oh yes, um, I I definitely encourage my clients to stay in a comfortable price point that is not going to break the bank and but at the end of the day it is not my decision it's the bank's decision the lender approves their price point their amount and then it's up to the buyer 
to determine that. If they want to go ahead and spend the full amount that they're pre-qualified for, then they can do so. But, you know, if they're fiscally responsible, they might decide to spend a little less than that. And I see that a lot, too. And I I think that uh, simplicity can can be very beneficial in many ways. And I think that um, there are many, many beautiful homes out here. And if you have the money to afford a $500,000 or $800,000 home, then by all means, that's within your means, that's within your budget, go right ahead and do so. You worked hard for that. You should reap the, the reward of your labor. However, you know, it, it's important that we exercise responsibility um, fiscally, especially when we are um, trying to be good stewards of God's blessings in our lives. Amen. So you do residential, do you do industrial as well? Like say a person no. has a business? So, they want. Okay. so I do um, residential homes and apartments, townhomes, basically, um, single-family homes. And I do not do commercial real estate. However, we do have um, Coldwell Banker does have a commercial um, uh, branch that does commercial real estate for businesses and people who may need to rent um, something to expand their business or whatever have you. And that's something that I am also more than happy if anyone has an inquiry of that nature they can feel free to reach out to me, and I can connect them with a commercial agent. I have no problem with that. Got it. And how can they get in contact with you? Well, my phone number is 843-327-9900, and my email address is T-I-F-F-A-N-Y-P-A-R-S-L-E-Y-777 at gmail.com. That is my personal email. Um, The reason I use that is just in case I get some personal emails ministry-related. That way it comes directly to my personal email, okay? Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Um, So where do you see this going? I mean, you have really elevated in real estate. Um, You did very well Um, being this year, year and a half, the year two for you going in next year. You've... Um, you've done some incredible sales, um, very positive. Uh, you've stayed in the fight. Where do you see this going? I know where the Lord has taken me. I know that I know what he's got planned for this ministry that he's called me and my family to. Um, I know that we are called to open transitional homes in various countries uh, to help with the refugee crisis. And this is something that drives me. It's driven me for many years, about a decade now. Um, Every decision that I make, I think to myself, will this take me a step closer to this vision? Or is this something that could hinder me or delay me from that vision? So that is always in the forefront of my mind when decision-making Now, Coldwell Banker um, just partnered with Amazon uh, to work with iBuyers, online buyers, for home sales. So there's a revolutionary um, new component to the real estate market that is being unrolled, rolled out for everyone to utilize um, coming soon. Now, that is something that I think is going to take our company to the next uh, peak, if you will, because the simple fact is, I mean, you can just see how Amazon has literally taken over multiple industries and they're very, very well um, thought out and their processes and order for running things is amazing. So I foresee a great blessing coming over Coldwell Banker for this um, business union And I believe that the Lord has placed me in this company for such a time as this because he's given me ideas um, on how real estate investors can actually donate their properties 
that they own for periods of time. Um, and they can get a huge tax write-off for what they would have made in rent for that mm. time period. Um, so it would be uh, a win-win on both sides. It would really help with the refugee crisis. Um, and it's looking to me like God has placed me in a company. It's an international company that um, I think might someday afford – an opportunity or a connection with a company or a person that might have the same passion and desire to bring this vision to pass. In the meantime, all I do is say, yes, Lord, I'll go. <laughs> That's it. I just say, all right, Lord, what do you want me to do today? And real estate is something he's got me doing to get to the next place that he's trying to take me in ministry. It's all about the kingdom. It's all about winning souls for the kingdom at the end of the day. Amen. Amen. You are winning souls. You are blessing people. Um, I thank you for coming here on our show on today. You didn't have to. Thank you, Calvin. No problem. Like I said, we know blessings upon you. I just know it's going to happen. And for those that are listening to us right now, you keep her uh, in your prayers. Um, she's going to revolutionize some things for her. Just for people in general, I know for me and my family, we're excited for her. We're excited to be a part of her presence, and we're excited that she's going to help us down the road as well, family, because I believe yeah. that uh, I want to be connected. Amen. 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 I believe Amen. the same. <laughs> well, the Lord knows yeah. what he's doing. He connects us to people, you know, for times and seasons. And uh, one thing I know about your show Calvin is that it's highly anointed by the Lord um, because of your humble heart and the Lord sees your humble heart and he knows that you are an authentic minister. You're authentic in your love for the Lord and, and you're honest about your shortcomings and the Lord just loves your heart and your show is blessed and you are blessed to be a blessing to the body of Christ because you actually, you bring about divine connections through your show. And they are divine connections and ministry that have blessed and enriched my life over the past five or four years now. Um, I've, I've met my best friends, some of my best friends on your show, who I wow. now have ongoing, daily, almost, interaction with. Um, and it's been such a blessing to my life. And uh, so your show was very impactful on my life, the lives of my children. Um, because of the connections that were made there. And so I just want to, if it's okay, can I pray for you in your show? Sure. Amen. Father God, I just ask that you would multiply and increase Calvin Logan, his family, their ministry. Um, I pray that you would add to the vision, Lord God, that you would give clear, concise details to the vision. And Father, that you would open the doors that are for them and close the doors that are not for them. The ones that are from you open wide and the ones that are not from you close now in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Father God, that they are led by the Spirit of the Lord and that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we thank you, Father, that everywhere the Logans go, there, there is freedom. Freedom follows. People are delivered, set free, healed, and transformed. Their lives are changed forever through this family and through this show. And I just thank you, Lord, for the anointing over this family. And I thank you, Father, for the international reach that it's, it, it already has, but it will continue to increase in daily and year by year. And I pray, Father, for the people who are called and appointed to help propel this show to the next level, Father God. I pray, Lord, that you would um, bring about those divine alignments right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Ladies Amen. and gentlemen, that was a blessing. Um, I just, I, you know, heaven's best to you and your family. Um, I know for certain that everything that you've been through is just a test for your breakthrough. And when you write your book to talk about how God elevated you, um, the dreams that you've always told God you wanted to do, um, you're going you're gonna to be all different types of the globe. 
but this is going to catapult you. I claim that people come from the north, south, east, and west to truly bless you. So you're going to open to those those homes. You're going to make. You're going to build those missionary ministries. You're going to have houses all over across the globe, and you're going to talk about how God has just blessed your heart and blessed others. I I know that for a fact. Um, I know that whatever who the people that's in your circle is going to stay tight. None is going to be infiltrated. I pray that God keeps the hedge of protection around you, and I pray that heaven's best upon you. We love you from the bottom of our hearts, and we know for certain that when you speak, the Lord listens, and when you speak, heaven moves, and we claim heaven's best mm-hmm. upon you. Thank you so much. Thank no you. I, I I love your family so very much, and the kids and I are very excited to see you tomorrow. So we look forward to it. And I'm gonna hop off of here and get my kids in the bed. <laughs> yes, Cause ma'am. Because because it's been a long day. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. <laughs> well, hey everybody, I thank you again, ladies and gentlemen. Ms. Hummet, Ms. T- Pastor Tiffany Parsley live here at the Logan Power Show. Hey, you just heard our guest from before, John Vaughn Jr. You heard Mr. Kevin Thornton here at the Logan Power Show. Ladies and gentlemen, I just want to tell you how blessed I am just to be in God's presence. I thank God for what he's blessed me with. He's blessed me with the best wife. I'm telling you right now, ladies and gentlemen, to me and Logan, I'm telling you, this woman of God right here is going to change the airwaves. When she comes on, I'm telling y'all, get excited. When she comes on the airway, she's going to bless your heart. We're going to get on the, on the show. I promise you she's going she gonna to come with me. We're going to co-host it together. Um, I got some things in the pipes. So my, my children, my family, everyone's connected. Hey, I love everybody. Um, again, go to our What's Today, www.theloganpowershow.us. Hey, you can donate to us, subscribe to our YouTube channel, share our stuff, follow us on Facebook, follow us on um, Instagram, Twitter. We thank again Ms. Kimmy Robinson, everyone of Lations Radio. I tell you right now, this has been a blessed time just to be on this platform. I can't tell you how blessed and favored to be a part. Heaven's best to her and her family. Every network we've been on, God has been good. Let y'all know, man, we about to – Move a little to the higher levels, come to television. Hey, we're excited about that. But you keep watching this. Hey, we love y'all. This is Calvlo, the Logan Power Show, nationwide, worldwide. Hey, God is good. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Miss Kimmy Kim, sign us off. God bless y'all.
giving one up above. But those of us who 